All right, make sure you hit record. Uh, and everybody heard you say that. It's Morning Joe and the Pro, Marco D'Angelo. I'm the Prez. It's the co-founders of wagertalk.com together again. Uh, real quick, you're hosting both First Pitch and Joe tomorrow. Thank you for that. Uh, I know you No were, problem. You were away this uh, week. Where were you? What were you doing? Uh, last weekend, I went back to Pittsburgh. I had two horses racing at the Meadows in Pittsburgh, uh, one on Saturday and one on Monday. Uh, we got a second uh, on Saturday with Sin City Boogie and uh, raced huge. Uh, thought we were going to get the win. Uh, just got caught at the wire. He split horses coming down the lane. It was his fastest race of his career, 151 and two. And uh, he went off at 12 to one. So I got a nice place and show uh, on him with the wager, but the win ticket would have made it very sweet. And then on Monday, the uh, three-year-old, um, she finished fourth, uh, race good, but we were still hanging her up. Uh, we got to make some equipment changes. We made one for this race. And unfortunately in horse racing, Prez, the horses can't tell you what they need. It's trial and error. And we, uh, we made a change and it, uh, kept her from making the break that she did the week before, but we couldn't steer her real good. And it, it cost her, uh, finishing fourth. She would have been an easy <laughs> third maybe a second if the uh jockey could have driven on her in the stretch but good weekend fun got to see a lot of friends and uh back home now ready to rock and roll and uh coming off a nice night in baseball 2-0 and in baseball and i i have a special we'll talk about that later tonight in baseball give the viewers a coupon to save ten dollars on my baseball play tonight okay well let's do the Want promo me give it to code them now yeah, well, I'll, I'll give out all one right. first, then you'll give out one, then we've got three NBA games on tap. We'll talk about them all, and then I'm going to eat because I'm starving. Uh, long story short, right. uh, you know, we talk about basketball all the time. Uh, WNBA season is starting. Uh, Bobby Liggs is the man in this sport. Uh, 171% of his WNBA plays... Uh, two seasons ago, 61% last season. Those are ridiculous numbers. Over the last two years, if you bet $100 on every unit that he put out, you would be up 6538 That type of return puts Warren Buffett to shame. Uh, his regular price for the season, six ninety five. dollars uh, It's two ninety five for all of you guys. Um... Just head over to sportsmemo dot uh, to wagertalk.com. I'm a little out of it. Uh, it's up. It's two ninety five for a couple of more days. Do not miss Bobby's WNBA season. Uh, Marco, you got a promo for us? Yeah, we've got tonight. I've got my baseball diamond gem going. And you can get this play just uh, $15 when you use coupon code GEM10. GEM10. Put that in at checkout. You'll get $10 off my big play tonight uh, in baseball. And as I said, coming off a 2-0 and sweep last night in baseball. Uh, and, you know, we're hitting 61% on the season, Prez. Add that to our profits that we've had over the last several years. Baseball has been my bread and butter, no question about it. And that's sixty-one percent that we're hitting this year. Most of the plays have been underdogs, Prez, and you know what that does to your profits when you are playing underdogs in baseball. So uh, check that out tonight. But today's show is all about NBA. We got three playoff games. Let's dive in. Oh uh, yeah, look, Philadelphia uh, on the road tonight, one and one. They looked uh, terrible the first game. Outstanding the second game putting up, I think offhand, if memory serves, 650 points uh, in that game alone. Uh, they're minus three and a half on the road here against Brooklyn. And, uh, you know, the bottom line for me is I like Brooklyn in this spot. And, you know, I, I feel like, you know, Embiid is a bit beat up. Uh, and Brooklyn, I think, and, and Teddy and I were talking about this on our preview show with uh, you, me, and him. Uh, Brooklyn's a better team than uh, 43 and 41. Uh, the line has moved a full point in the last hour or so. 
Uh, but I like the Nets. I'm going to go with Brooklyn at plus three and a half. Uh, I don't have an opinion on the over or under. What do you think? I looked at this game, uh, Prez, and my takeaway from game two is Brooklyn won game one. They stole home court advantage. They accomplished what they needed to do going to Philadelphia. I think in game two, they played with no sense of urgency because they had what they already needed. They got the, you know, the win in game one. Philadelphia, on the other hand, it was life and death for them. If they go down 0-2 going back to Port or going back to Brooklyn, uh, they're in trouble. So they came out with a big game. And the game, because it was such a blowout, Philadelphia shot 56% from the field. And as you said, they scored a ton of points, 145 to be exact. But because it was a blowout, the score ended up being uh, – Brooklyn put up a lot of points late in the second half. Garbage time points. Nobody was playing defense in this. And we ended up with a total of 268 combined points. Now, with that said, game three tied at 1-1. This is a brand new series. It all starts again tonight. And I just think this total's too high. They're overreacting to the last game. It's because it was a blowout. I think you'll see a closer game tonight. I do lean to Brooklyn with you. Uh, but the one thing Brooklyn's got to change, the first two games, they're getting killed on the boards. And in the last game, uh, Brooklyn was out-rebounded 62-41. to That's bad in itself. But when you consider Philadelphia shot 56% from the field, there wasn't a lot of rebounds for them to be grabbing. They hit 56% of their shots, and they still out-rebounded them 62-41. to That's something they got to fix in the first two games. They're out-rebounded 126-93. to I think you're going to see a more deliberate style from Brooklyn tonight. That's what they need to do, limit possessions, because let's face it, from top to bottom, roster to roster, Philadelphia has more offensive weapons than Brooklyn does. So they need to limit the possessions to stay in the game. I lean to Brooklyn. I also like the under. I think the under is the better play because of it being inflated off of the last score. So that's my take on game one. Uh, he's Marco D'Angelo. I'm the Prez. You're watching Morning Joe and the Pro. You can find us every day at Wager Talk TV on our YouTube channel, as well as at Sports Memo and wagertalk.com. Uh, Teddy, San Antonio averaged 100 a uh, Teddy. Marco, uh, San Antonio, I'm out of it today. Completely freaking out of it. Uh, San Antonio averaged a hair under 112 points a game this season. Denver, uh, a hair under 111 points this uh, a game this season. The over and under in this game came out at 212, and it's been bet down to 208. The side, San Antonio, minus two. It's been bet up to minus four and a half. Uh, I'm struggling with the side here. I think you can make an argument for both, and especially the fact that you didn't get that two number uh, on San Antonio. I wouldn't want to be sort of behind the line move. Uh, but I, I do want to be behind the line move on the over and under. That's a four-point swing. Uh, I'm going to go on the over in this game, Marco. I think both these teams... Uh, as we've seen, can put up 110 points. Uh, I think that number is a bit low. I like the over in this game. Yeah, I'm not going to get involved here uh, with the total. Uh, it is moved too much. Um, I did like it when it was at 212, 211 and a half, but that number long gone wasn't there for uh, any period of time. What really does uh, strike me in this game, uh, Prez, Four and a half is absolutely insane for the Spurs. You look at game two. Now, granted, it was a life and death game two for the Denver Nuggets. They couldn't afford to go down 0-2. So the line was pumped slightly. But still, it was minus seven. Minus seven at home in game two. And now they're a four and a half point road dog. You're telling me that if we take from the closing line Tuesday to tonight's line, we're saying that home court's worth an 11.5-point yeah. swing here? That's insane. Absolutely insane. The value is on the Nuggets in this game. And because it is San Antonio, because it's Popovich, and I'm going to give you a stat that's mind-boggling.
struggling this year with San Antonio, and it's also the reason that people are jumping on in this game, but they've made the line too high. San Antonio, when they're revenging a loss where the opponent scored 110 points or more this season, this season, this is this year, so you can't say, oh, that's something that's four or five years old. That's with this team. They're 20-2 and two against the spread in revenge. 20-2, and two, Press, but I cannot jump in here with a clear, clear conscience and lay four and a half with the Spurs. It's way too high. I think the Spurs can get the win, but I see this coming down to a one-possession game either way. And with that said, if I'm getting four and a half, I'm going to go ahead and grab the points with Denver. This is a spot. Everybody saw the game Tuesday. They know that Denver, you know, they look at it as a lucky win. To me, I look at it as a confidence-building win. This is a team that's not playoff-tested. They chased Golden State all year for the number one seed. And in that game late in the year, when they still could have won the number one seed, Golden State showed them who boss was. And I think that that shook their confidence. And then they lose game one to come out and be down 19 and rally to win and save your season. To me, I'll take that momentum and ride it into game three and grab Denver plus the inflated number. Uh, Really good points there, Marco, all around. I fell asleep midway through, but I'm back now. And, uh, you know, even while sleeping, I thought they were good points. Dude, I cannot make... Oh, Perez. I cannot make heads or tails uh, of this, uh, of what to do here on this Clipper game. I mean, you know, they, they look, they went into Golden State game two and one. Uh, there's something wrong in Golden State. We know it. We saw it all year. year we heard about it. But here's the bottom line. Uh, and I was on the, sh- the um, uh, sports grid show with uh, Gabe Morenci today, and we spoke about this. You know, if you take the Clippers tonight and they lose and they don't cover, you sit there and you say to yourself, well, uh, Golden State off of a loss. Revenge factor, pissed off. They go in there, they annihilate the Clippers and win by 30. That makes total sense. You take Golden State tonight minus the eight and a half and they uh, don't cover. And you sit there and you say, of course they don't cover. We know something's wrong. They couldn't even win a game on their own court. I don't know what the hell to do in this game and there ain't no way I'm touching the total. Help me, help me, sir, help me. Well, obviously, blowing that 31-point lead, Golden State's going to come in here focused. That's uh, NBA history there, uh, blowing a 31-point lead in the playoffs, especially at home, to do that. So now we're going to see a focused Golden State team. We've talked about it all year. It looks like at times they're just going through the motions, waiting to get to the NBA Finals. But when you lose a game like they did the other day, and now you you got to go on the road. You got to regain momentum. The thing that bothers me with Golden State is, and we talk about it, that sometimes they look like they're just going through the motions. They're playing sloppy basketball. They had 21 turnovers in game one and 22 turnovers in game two. That's not Golden State basketball. They got to clean that up. Now, this season, following a loss, they were 18 and six. Uh, to come back and win the next game. And they won six in a row um, following a loss with an average winning margin of 14.3 points per game. So we do expect the Warriors to come back and win tonight. Um, Here's a stat to go against the Clippers. Now, this is a five-year NBA league-wide stat, uh, Prez. You play against underdogs from three, uh, three and a half points to nine and a half points after a game where the total went over by 24 points or more during the month of April, this angle is 31 and four uh, to take them uh, to go against did the either Clippers. of the team. Did one of the players on the teams not wear socks? Should I take that into account? <laughs> well, it's just it's because it's such an outlier uh, with it. I like Golden State here. I'm going to go ahead and take them. This is one of those ones where you take Golden State and you lose, you're going to say, yeah, I took the popular team. I laid the big number. How dumb am I? 
But as you said, if you take the Clippers and lose, and Golden State just throttles them from start to finish, you're going to feel even more stupid uh, with that bet because you know what the Warriors did in Game 1. You know what they were doing in Game 2 and that they should be able to continue that. Um, if you want to hedge your action here, I think that the, the angle here is that because they were embarrassed how they gave up the 31-point lead, that goes to the defensive play. The Clippers had to score a shitload of points to come back. I think you're going to see a defensive effort from the Warriors. This total's high. And, you know, you always hold your breath when you take an under uh, involving Golden State. But to me, I can't take the over in this one. Uh, I think this is one that even you could have the Warriors win, you know, 125 uh, to 100 or 128 to 103, and you're still going to be under the total. I just think that they're going to get in here show who's boss so a lean to golden state and a lean to the under but this is probably the worst game of the three to be betting tonight <clears throat> he's marco and i'm the present well i need to eat and nap so i'm getting the hell out of here uh thanks man <laughs> and thanks for hosting tomorrow be well and we'll speak to you soon all right don't forget gem 10 get that play tonight uh, our baseball diamond gem